In this video, I'm going to show how to create a recording of a web browser using ZebraTester. Once we've completed the installation and have our root certificate uh, implemented in our ZebraTester folder and are ready to begin recording, first we're going to load up our GUI screen here, and then we can set the proxy. And one easy way to do that is by using the Apica Script Recorder plugin. I will provide a link in the description to this. The other option is to set the proxy manually. And I can do that on Mac by going to my system preferences, go to network, go to advanced, and then go to my proxies tab. Here I'm going to set an HTTP and HTTPS proxy using this address here, which is my local host, and then this port 7997. I'm going to hit OK, and remember to hit apply. To change the proxy settings in Windows, it may differ between which version of Windows you have. Windows 10 differs significantly from Windows 7 in server editions. So be sure to Google how to change your Windows proxy settings. You should note that when setting the proxy at the OS level, it's going to set the proxy for your entire machine. So that's going to use ZebraTester as the forward proxy with this address. Uh, that's going to be everything, including your Outlook, and other applications. So if you forget to change it back, uh, you may have trouble getting to the internet, which is why I really recommend using the Apica Script Recorder plugin if possible. The other option is to use Firefox, and this is a great option to use for recording web browsers because the proxy settings are localized to Firefox. Setting the proxy settings in Firefox are simple. We'll go to our Preferences, and then we will just do a search for proxy, and our network settings will appear here. We'll check this box for manual proxy configuration, and then apply the same settings here. Once we're ready to begin recording, I can use this button here to start recording. You'll notice that the light will start blinking red. I can use this if I'm using the proxy set at the OS level, because this is going to record everything on this machine. Uh, this is also useful if we were recording through a mobile device. We can also proxy pretty much any, any sort of device that's proxyable, like PlayStations, Rokus, Xboxes, IoT devices, you name it. I'm going to stop this recording, and now I'm going to use my plugin. I'm going to make sure that I empty my browser cache and hit Start Recording. So before I go to the address, I want to bring up the developer console here and show you the network bar to show you exactly what the recording consists of. So you can see here from the waterfall that all of these individual calls are being made by the browser when I go visit this website. This is a demo website where we're going to be reserving tickets uh, in, a, in an e-commerce fashion. You can see all of the JavaScript, static elements, HTML, images. All of these are being requested by the browser, and this is essentially what ZebraTester is listening for. And here's how the page appears as it's rendering all the elements, all the actions that are loaded. So if I go back to ZebraTester and refresh my display, here I have the session that I just loaded. Now, there's a lot of content that, were, that was caught. You can see that I'm using Google. It's probably connecting to my Google Docs. I'm getting other uh, Google search APIs in here. These are probably autocomplete as I was typing. So to remove that, I'm going to click on Filter and remove everything but the host that I want. And that's a little bit better. Lots of JavaScript on this page. Here I want to illustrate the ZebraTester recording process. ZebraTester is acting as a forward proxy, essentially a man in the middle, listening to everything that our browser is sending as it makes its requests out to the internet and in the origin or content delivery servers that are going to be providing the information. This is where ZebraTester sits and is going to listen to the requests and the responses and catalog them for us to parameterize. Now, quite often there will be a corporate forward proxy, if you're on a corporate network, that's going to sit out here. And we're going to need to specify ZebraTester to forward its requests to that outbound proxy going to the internet. Otherwise, the corporate firewall is going to prevent our outbound traffic. So I'm going to show you how to set that next. Coming back to the ZebraTester 
main menu, I'm going to reset my recording. Within the personal settings, there's a few options for us to set that next proxy. Either we're going to know what that explicit next proxy is, and we can put in our host, port, username, and password if we need to authenticate, or leave that out if we don't. Check this box and apply this setting if we know what that explicit proxy is. Otherwise, what's becoming pretty popular are proxy autoconfig. These are pack files. You'll find these often when you go to set the proxy. If you see uh, a similar address here that has uh, format something like proxy, your company name, uh, pack.js, or however that shows up for you, um, you'll wanna put that address here, check this box, and hit apply. And this may be required for all outbound traffic. While I'm in the personal settings, I think it'd be prudent to cover the other options as well, like using client certificates to authenticate, using Kerberos authentication, or NTLM uh, v1 or v2 authentication. These may be required for us to complete the proxy recording uh, in order to access some of the applications. Uh, you can read more about that uh, in our Apica knowledge base.